Hi everyone, Kieran here from Wire Munch, and joining me we have Chris Schnupson of Wire Munch and Tom Merritt of Twit.tv. Tom, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm the host of a daily tech news show called Tech News Today at twit.tv slash TNT, and I also do several other online shows, uh, too many to mention. I keep myself busy, but <laughs> Sword and Laser, Science Fiction, Fantasy Book Club is probably my second biggest one. Nice. And Chris Shane? Um, I'm co-founder of Wire Munch. Blah, blah, blah. You can find me at Christian Upson, pretty much everything centric around there. Okay, and I'm Kieran, and you can find me at wiremunch.com and at ikieran smith. So, on with the questions, Tom. Um, I believe Christian will be asking the first uh, yeah. question. Asking the first okay, question. Um, I'm going to start off with an easy one, maybe. Uh, what phone is your current daily driver? I use an iPhone 5. Uh, I've been locked into the iPhone universe since it launched. And uh, for years, I, I bought it because it was by far the most popular phone, and to cover mm -hmm. the space, kind of had to have it. Uh, le this last time, I almost jumped to Android, but I was still sort of locked in with things like music. Uh, this time, I'm not sure. I don't think I'll buy an iPhone 5S. I don't see it in the rumors of anything no. changing my mind there to, to switch. Uh, I may go to an Android phone just to see what it's like. I do use an Android tablet. Maybe KitKat will lure you then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll break me off a piece. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's perfect. And now, what made you decide that you wanted to start doing podcasts? I became familiar with podcasts in 2004 when uh, they first were popularized by Adam Curry. People debate whether he invented them or not, but there's mm -hmm. no doubt that podcasting as we know it began with Daily Source Code. And I was at CNET at the time and said, let's we should do this. Uh, I've always been into using the internet in new and interesting ways to convey information. And thankfully, I, there were some other people at CNET who thought it was a worthwhile endeavor as well. Nice. Very good. Very good. Um, Christian? Uh, yeah. Uh, the next question is, who is one of your biggest inspirations? You know, it, it, there's so many in so, so many different ways. Mm. but. Yeah. I, uh, when I was in college, one of my biggest inspirations was Hunter S. Thompson, uh, because in, in college I was all about, you know, being revolutionary and changing the rules of journalism and all that sort of thing. As I've grown older, that, that's, he still definitely inspires me journalistically, but I, I do have a great respect for people like Edward R. Murrow, who paved the way for broadcast journalism and making it something that was worth watching. Yeah. Some great people, Thanks. yeah. Yeah. Um, personally, just out of um, factual information, my biggest inspirations consist of Johnny Ive, the designer of Apple, Steve Jobs, Tim Cook, all that stuff, and yourself, obviously. Yeah, that's the same for me as well. <laughs> um, perfect. So, what started your love of sci-fi and fantasy stuff? I always was into space stuff. I mean, I think getting up in the mornings and mm -hmm. watching rocket launches uh, when I was a kid is one of my favorite memories. I remember getting a uh, pop tarts and, and <laughs> sitting down to watch the Soyuz Apollo mission, the one where they linked up in space. It's one of my earliest memories, and I was always a big fan of the shuttle launches. Loved watching Star Trek, and I think that's probably what drove it the most. Was my dad was really into watching Star Trek, and it would air on Sunday mornings reruns, and we would sit down and we'd watch it together, and that was always a good time. Mm -hmm. Well, I love watching um, rocket launches. I just it's, it's something that really fascinates me, like space, like how did we get here? You know, religion. Re religion does come into it, I, I suppose, but you know, so yeah, it's dramatic. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, um, so the next question is, what was your first ever technology item? First ever technology item was was. Uh, <sighs> The TI-35 calculator, <laughs> nice. uh, or TI-30 rather. I stole this from, and I didn't steal it, but my dad had this for work, and I spent so much time using it that he bought a second one so that he could actually still use it for work, and I, and I could play, a lot, play around with that. So that is the earliest piece of technology that I would use. I would, it had memory on it. I could store numbers and, and perform operations and everything. It was awesome. Nice. Very cool. How old were you when you received that? I think that was, I was about seven or eight. Seven, eight, nice. Oh. Very good. Where do you see the technology industry in 10 years' time? See, in 10 years, it'll be 2023. Mm. And 
Microsoft, Apple, Google, and Amazon will have all merged. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's hard to say. When you think back to 2003, it doesn't seem like that much has changed. When, you know, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Google, they were all around then. Uh, it, it was the big players were there. But they weren't the big players yet. No. no. And we didn't have smartphones and tablets. That has completely changed how computing works. And I, and I think... Probably the things to keep an eye on as far as forming what the future 10 years will be like are 3D printing, which I don't know if the 10 years is enough time for it to become massively popular, but I think it's really going to change things. Wearable computing, whether it's watches and glasses or, or something else, I think is really going to change the way we do things. I think there's going to someone's going to hit upon that phone or tablet form factor the way it happened recently. Because there were phones and tablets in 2003, right? But mm, yeah, it took yeah. someone like Apple figuring out how to make them awesome. So I think wearable technology will have that moment as well. Those are probably the two big ones. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so do you think the upcoming iPhone 5S um, will have it what it needs to keep up with the likes of maybe the S4 or the HTC One or any phone like that? I don't think Apple cares about keeping up. I think what it will do is have enough appeal to maintain their market share and keep the Apple fans happy and in the house. I already know a lot of people, just the idea of a gold or champagne colored iPhone or whatever it ends up being is enough to make them want to get the new one. Uh, and when, it, when you have that kind of appeal, you don't have to massively change things. And Apple's very good about not adding features until they know they the, can support yeah. them very well. Mm -hmm. Unless it's cloud. If it's cloud-based, they seem to mess it up. But yeah. otherwise, they're, they're hardware, not, do it, not messing it up. No. Awesome. So should we expect an iPad mini, um, an updated iPad mini on the 10th of September next Tuesday? I, would, I wouldn't say it would, is it possible, but I would doubt yeah. it. Yeah. I, I, th I think it's probably less than a 50% chance. It might be 47%, something in there. Mm -hmm. I think they really want to focus on the phones. And I, th I would expect we'll get a surprise of some kind. And an iPad mini wouldn't be much of a surprise. No. If we get a new iPad mini, it's not going to be a large portion of the announcement. I wouldn't expect. It would be sort of like when they, in the past, have updated the iPod Touch. They announce it as sort of the second or third item. And I think the iPad mini would be like that. I don't, I don't see them revolutionizing the iPad mini. It's probably, you know what, now I'm, I'm gonna step back to that. The invite that went out today said, we wanna brighten your day. iPad mini with a, with a retina display seems like a mm -hmm. better chance yeah. in, in, in that messaging. So, so maybe 61%. 61. <laughs> okay, Christian. Um, I know you said earlier about you may not be interested in the iPhone 5S, but if you were, do you think, well, with anyone else was, do you think that the fact that it comes in champagne or gold, whatever they'll call it, um, change anyone's decisions to pick up the device? It won't change mine. I mean, it sounds ugly to me, but yeah. yes, and it's going <laughs> apparently, yes, it's going to change a lot of people's minds. There's a, so many different kinds of people seem to be excited by that idea of getting an iPhone that isn't black or white and you don't need a case to do it. But that seems to be appealing to people. Yeah. Well, I had Leo say he was going to pick one up, so yeah, I one customer there. <laughs> Do you enjoy working with Leo? Yeah, it's great. Uh, you know, the brilliance of working for Leo is that our minds about content are the same. We both yep. realize yep. what's important to cover and how to cover. And what I've enjoyed is it from from day one is the openness to being able to do the show that a way I want to do and the flexibility that provides. Yeah. Like I say, like um, like I say, uh, um, like I said earlier in the video, yourself and Leo are just huge inspirations of mine, and uh, oh, keep up the good work. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, so last. <laughs> so our last question um, from me. Uh, it's going to be quite a geeky question, but um, I'll I'll ask it anyway. Coffee or tea? <laughs> Coffee in the morning. Yeah. Tea after four. Yeah, for four. Why? Why after four? Well, after four, I don't want coffee, but I might still want a little bit of a lift. Mm -hmm. And tea is uh, is is a, is a nice, milder way of doing it. Nice. And I, I, I drink my tea the way you all do. I, I drink it with milk, so uh, <laughs> it's it's a nice, really, it's a good mild pick me up in the afternoon. But coffee in the morning, I gotta have black coffee to get me jump started. So yeah. Oh. <laughs> my dog doesn't like coffee in the morning. No. <laughs> Sorry, that? Say that again? You have some British within you. 
yeah yeah. no, i i think that's no secret to anybody who who watches my shows that i'm a touch of an anglophile. yeah. some would say more than a touch so christian, um if you'd like to conclude yeah, um thanks for answering the questions tom. It, um it's been great for having you. thanks for taking time out of the day to um answer these questions and be with yeah. us. um if you have any links you want to plug uh for the video, you can say it right now if you want. Sure. Uh, thank you, guys. Good questions, by the way. Yes, these these were fun much. to answer. And if anyone wants to keep up with the things I do, I, I sort of keep it all up to date at tommerritt.com. That's T-O-M-M-E-R-R-I-T-T. Okay, we'll put that down in the description. Yeah, for sure. And you can check us out at ymunch and ymunch.com. Thanks for watching, guys.